Another exclusive edition of Pero Show. Tonight we have as our guest Honorable Dr. Chris Ibari. Dr. Chris Ibari is the Commissioner for Budget, Planning and Economic Development in Edo State. He is here to attend, he's here in Dublin to attend the International Bar Association happening within this week. Dr. Chris Ibari, you are welcome to Dublin. And you are welcome to Perot Show. Thank you very much. Okay. It's nice meeting you. All right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, tell me, how have you defining Dublin? The weather, the, the people, and everything? I thank you very much. I think uh, and, uh, the first and foremost, the people are lovely, and uh, the weather has been so friendly. I think uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an. Um, it's kind of environment I'm used to because uh, this is not my first time of really coming and going to okay. this part yeah. of Europe. Because I asked that question, I remember when um, Mr. George Salabi, the Deputy Ambassador to Embassy of Nigeria, when he came to when he came to Dublin, he said, "Ireland is a place where you cannot predict the weather. You don't know if it's going to rain or if there will be sun. But at any rate, this is." Island. Welcome to Dublin. Thank you very much. Thank so you very much. How have the I know that the International Bar Association started today? Yeah. Yeah. What is that actually about? Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, the International Bar Association is uh, an association of all the lawyers all around the world coming together annually like this um, uh, to interact. Uh, concerning every aspect of the legal profession. And uh, it's an annual event, an annual event, and uh, fortunately, it's being rotated from uh, country to country. So, as we have it in Dublin, Europe this year, don't be surprised, it might be in America or in Africa in next, next year. Time. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, it's good. I mean, we in Ireland, we are lucky, we are fortunate to have all of you and we say shout out to the International Bar Association because it's brought to <laughs> Dublin. We are fortunate to have our brothers and sisters come in here to be with us for the next six days. Shout out to the Bar Association again. Thank you very much and it's also good to, uh, in terms of uh, the, the potentiality, the assessments of the potentiality of the tourism in Dublin. And also the, the economy. Yeah. So yeah. it could yeah. be, yeah. be an added advantage yeah. to the that's, economy that's of the country. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. mean, the world is, uh, <laughs> is focusing on us now. Of course. I mean, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. We're happy. Thank you. Thank um, but you. Honorable um, Chris Barry, let's come down to basis. Could you tell us briefly about yourself? Who is the man Chris Barry? Well, thank you very much. Um, well, Honorable Chris Abari um, is a legal practitioner, first and foremost. I specialize in marital, maritime law practice. Uh, also a politician. But presently, um, uh, with the Comrade Governor, with an appointment with Cumbria Governor as a commissioner in Edo State. Like I should really introduce um, the Commissioner for Budget Planning and Economic Development. It's an appointment I took up about uh, a year and a half ago uh, in the, the Cumbria Governor's Cabinet in Edo State. I must say that, um, yes, a legal practitioner also come a, a politician. I actually started politicking when I was in secondary school. That is way back uh, early 80s, when the Second Republic then. Uh, I was there, the youth 
wing uh, leader in the, the GMPP, the Great Nigeria People's Party, uh, People yeah. Party of the then uh, Alaji Waziri. Mm -hmm. Then uh, that spanned up to when I got to university. So after my law school, um, I had to also came into politics. And you were, if I remember correctly, you you were the president of Vision Association in Uniben? Yeah, I was. Uh, after Uniben, actually right from uh, secondary school, I was the president of Eastern Student Union in the then the entire Esako and one now we don't call it do not from there when I go to university University of Benin precisely I was the president of a Sun student union again for two tenures in short it was during my tenure the first bursary was won to the uh, we secured the first bursary award to the entire Eastern Students uh, Union in University of Benin. So when I got to law school, it was then Bender State. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was then Bender State. There was uh, no data I do then. So I was also made the president of Bender State Lawyers Association. So until when I passed out, when I graduated from the law school, I think they joined the party, that is the SDP, the Social Democratic Party, on that which platform the late uh, Abiola contested. Yeah. So until you, we all know what happened then, when the military aborted that, um, um, that election, so I went back to practice. In 1998, I was actually the member, a founding member of PDP, now PDP, because I was in the movement that time. I was uh, one of the, the wing that uh, later, you know, uh, that were later uh, joined together to, to form the PDP in 1998. In 1998, as a founding member of the uh, People Democratic Party, I would go to my base, which is then a do state, you know, to join forces with our leaders to ensure that in 1999 we were able to have our way during the election, which we did. Since then, I've been in politics, combining my legal practice with politicking. So in 1996, I mean 2006, so 2007, I decided to go in for election to contest into the uh, Federal House of Representatives. I think then, uh, uh, well, if, uh, I don't know the people, many people, if you were well abreast of what happened during the primary, actually won the primary, because I like what normally dictates in PDP then, you know, I was asked to leave the, the ticket, you know, for Honorable Friday Tula, you know, because then he was in House of Assembly as the, the speaker, for God knows why. So that was how I got a ticket to the House of Rep. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to be in the House of Rep then. Then in 19, in 2000 and, um, in 2007, I was asked to come and contest for, as a local government chairman in my local government, that is ASAN Notice Local Government. You know, I was actually persuaded by this presence Honorable Minister of Works and uh, oh. uh, yeah, Minister of Works. That is the um, architect. Uh, my, uh, my, yeah, my uh, architect. Yeah, architect. Mike Olivemi. After much uh, conviction, I came in at the eleventh tower. A week to the election again, the ticket was taken away from me by the leaders. You know, I said that. Oh well, when I asked why, I was told that I'm not going to be 
I'm going to, I will not bend. <laughs> if I will not bend. So that was, that was how it went. I think because of the way things were going in PDP, that was when I now left PDP in 2009. I joined uh, forces with uh, ACN, which is Action Congress of Nigeria, under the able leadership of uh, Comrade Adam Sushomoli. So since then, I've been uh, in the Action Congress of Nigeria. Until 2011, I contested again into the House of Representatives. Yes, if you are abreast or actually follow the tribunal and the court of appeal matter, you will discover that after the analysis, I won the election with 1,881. But for the time, for the electoral act, which specified that the, 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 the election must have, the tribunal must have to, and the appeal court must have to conclude they are they are proceedings which is 60 days due to the 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 subsidy riot subsidy process protests in nigeria mm -hmm. time bar for them to give judgment within that period so when the subsidy protest was called off the 60 days has already elapsed that is why you find, that is why you discover that the guy that is there again now, the Honorable Friday Tula, you know, went back. Otherwise, he was not the one that's supposed to be there. He knew he never won the election. PDP knew it's not their candidate that's supposed to, to occupy that uh, seat today. So in a sense, he's, uh, that seat where he is sitting today in the House of Rep. Actually, belong to me. Well, um, Honourable, um, looking at your long history of uh, politicking, we can see that um, you didn't just come into politics today. You've been no. there. Thank and, you very uh, much. But um, again, when we look at, um, it is not how far now. But we're looking at how well yeah. now. You've been denied the opportunity to, to serve your people for a long time the way you would have loved to, even when you've been serving your people. But to have an official position where you can actually uh, make the difference to your people have been a problem because of from what you have said, Godfatherism, mm -hmm. you know, group of Kabas yeah. uh, deciding to do. Um, what usually they do in our darling country, Nigeria. But now, um, I would rather not look at, um, not go into the issue of um, your contesting for the House of um, Rep, because like you, as you've said, the election was done and it went to the tribunal and before judgment could be given, the 60 days has elapsed. But the point now is that you are the Commissioner for Budget, Planning and Economic Development. And I am very much interested in assessing people from their individual um, perspective. As a government representative, as a government appointee, what do you think that having been in government for how long now? Have you been in government? Oh, yes, almost, uh, almost two years. Almost two years now. What can you really say that being the commissioner for planning and economic development you have done for the people of Edo State? Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, we say Repisa Lukwito. That is uh, the first speak for itself. Uh, well, uh, I must say first and foremost a big thank you to the Comrade Governor of Edo State, Comrade Adam Salio Shomole, the Executive Governor of our dear state, Edo State, for giving me the opportunity, you know, after this why to, to be a part of his success story in Edo State today. 
Yes, uh, the budget ministry, I had to cover from a, 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 from a chap that, is, uh, that really laid a very solid foundation there. Foundation which I meant uh, with all the encouragement from the Comrade Governor, you know, the, which I have to build on. You know, don't forget that all this is why I, I am a technocrat coming from a private sector background. All, all, all my life, my first time of actually working, you know, for, for somebody or for, for, for a government. You know, I have been in, in legal practice all, all my life. You know, well, when I go to the budget ministry, I, I discover that my private uh, set of background actually, you know, really assisted me to catch up easily because it's a ministry that is a technical ministry. You know, um, um, our governor, we always call it the headmaster of the state because it's a ministry that every other MDAs pass through. We are really a regulatory ministry. The check and balances of all the MDAs are based in my ministry. You know, since I took over, the Comrade Governor encouraged me to go into several trainings both home and, uh, and abroad, which I went. That really exposes me to all the nitty gritties. Then uh, right, I meant that there have been uh, these kind of laws that need to be put in place, particularly the procurement law. It's a law that enables the government, you know, to operate an open government in a transp uh, transparently to the whole world in the sense that any contract that is going to be awarded in the states from the tone of a million has to be advertised both in the print media and the electronic, electronic media you know this law, I could say Edo State was the second state in the Federation that was that enacted that law. I think it's one of the reasons why the World Bank, you know, to date has that uh, source so for Edo State. In addition to that, we have what is called a uh, uh, we, 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 there is a regulation we, we, we put in place. I have to make sure that it's strengthened, which is where we have what is called warrant, warrant session. This warrant session is it, it, it's a department whereby all the spendings of the states, all the contracts that is awarded in the states outside the procurement you know after the relevant signatures let it be from the governor from the commission from any commissioners or from uh, the ssg or from any officers in the state is sent to our ministry we have to do proper check to ensure that what that money is meant for, and that money is used for it. And the money that is being asked, being requested to be disbursed for that particular project, we have to cross-check that. If it is 20,000 error, we have to ensure that the budget head, where that 20,000 error is going to be uh, removed to, to fulfill that uh, particular project, the money is there. And not, not only just there, that the money, you know, is spent for that purpose. And, and in addition to that, we also, also put in place what we call 
though it was there, not told her to uh, effective monitoring and evaluation department so that all the projects monitoring and evaluation department had to ensure that there is a director that that is a specialist in that department the director is appointed in that department the department with the aid of uh, comrade uh, governor's approval and the ssg the the, the uh, all the necessary um, uh, uh, materials and the equipment we need in that department, from vehicles to computers to um, um, qualified staff, you know, you know, approved for me to set up that department. That department is a very vital department in the state. Those schools, those roads, the hospitals, you see that anything, any, uh, any, um, um, job you see that Congress governor is doing at those state today that department is their responsibility the moment the contract is awarded to go out with vehicle to ensure that the contract is on site this is on a daily basis it's on site the school is is being built according to specification the the the, the road the kind of thickness the kind of um, uh, the kind of uh, materials you need to use for it that is being used is not adulterated. The state is not being shortchanged. This monitoring and evaluation department. And uh, all these are the things we put in place. And uh, not too long ago, there was this uh, project of uh, the, the DPO, which is for the, for, for the ass assistance by the World Bank to the state. So do my predecessor started it which he could not conclude, I had to follow it up with the World Bank to ensure that this facility is granted to the state. That is why recently you must have read in the papers and say it in some of the media that Edo states have been granted about 75 million US dollars. It's actually going to be, it's actually 225 million US dollars because it three uh, tranches. You know, 75, 75 in three years, with more or less zero percent repayment. The moratorium is after ten years. Okay. Yeah. So all these and a lot of other other things, the innovation that are brought into the budget ministry, particularly with this area that I mentioned. You know, and the, the, the cordiality between my ministry and other MDAs also, and the budget preparation for the first time. You saw the budget of 2012. It was a model which the federal government has to follow. The, in short, to, to make sure that the capital budget and the capital provision, you know, is higher. We appropriate more into the capital provision more than the recurrent. I think this was what the federal government saw that the the national assembly had to use the do state as a reference point telling the federal government when the, the federal ministry of finance submitted their 2012 budget they said look take a cue from a do state the federal government presented almost 80 percent of capital uh, almost 80 percent of recurrent um, um, uh, budget to them and 20 uh, percent capital before uh, there was uh, before they had to go and uh, do some ratification. So I think these and many others are uh, my little contribution to the budget to ministry. The budget, uh, ministry ministry so far. Yeah. So um, from what from your, what you have said about the your ministry, we can assume that uh, uh, you take responsibility um, to ensuring that. Projects that are being initiated in Edo State are properly done yeah. and completed, and you give a pass mark that has been done with the money that was allocated for the project. Yes, that is it. So That's it. you must be vital to the progress and development of the Edo 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 area. Thank you so much. Uh, well, I I, I, I know that um, the Ashon Governor is doing a lot. 
we we are all in support and we congratulate you. First of all, I think I should actually con congratulate um, the entire uh, Doe State and um, the um, Adam Oshomole, the Cambridge uh, Cabinet, for a job well done. Um, I think that uh, the way that the election, the result of the election was actually a pass mark on Thank the you. government. Thank you so much. Thank because you so much. Um, Thank before you. now, I remember that each time we talked about a dose state, it was now a given that unfortunately a dose state do not have the money to initiate pro, uh, projects and or engage in any kind of develop, developmental um, initiative in the state because we didn't have the money. So it was being a dose state was being regarded as the poorest state in Nigeria. But Oshomole, uh, the comrade, has come to tell the show that that wasn't actually right. That the problem was corruption. That we, we, had, we, we, we are not the richest state, but at least we had enough to tell our people that you can live a better life than the, what, the one you're living. Thank so you. That, that's, that's a good thing. Thank you very much. And uh, let me thank you so much for the, for the commendation, particularly on the election, that we just congratulate our dear Comrade Governor for the victory of, uh, it was actually two victories, uh, the victory of the July 14th elections and uh, the victory in court again. And let me use this video to thank all of you, all the Edolites in diaspora. For your great contribution, your contribution to for our, for our victory for that uh, July 14th election is immeasurable. We will say God, may God bless you all, because all of you, so many of you, had to even you know come down to uh, those states to ensure that to ensure that the election was successful. Those of you who could not even come down, I, I, I knew some of you that, that went uh, into the to, to the internet, into the Facebook, into the tube, to ensure that you 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 you, you help us to carry out massive campaign and uh, talk to your people at home to tell them, look, this man that I've been able to come to develop our state because you you know there is need for him to come back. In spite of the neg negative publicity, people were really talking about, um, uh, uh, saying about us. And uh, I, I, I must say that your contribution, those of you in, in diaspora, yeah, right. yeah. you know, have really assisted us a great deal, you know, because I, in particular, from my local government, uh, I knew some houses I've gone to, so where my son, my daughter, a brother has called me and said, look, we should vote for this man. And let me tell you, Comrade Governor is a godsend to the Edo State people. That is a man that I've touched every village, every nook and cranny in Edo State.